Will you stop fussing, woman? I'm well enough. Oh, hold still, can't you? Did you remember to feed the dogs? Of course I did. First thing I told you I would see to them. Oh, now, come on, we're late as it is. Is Alice ready yet? She's just getting the baby ready. Oh, well, I suppose we can't go without him. I should think not. It's his day. His day, mind. There you are. That's better. You look fine. She'd have been proud, Dougal. Aye. Away you now and bring the Land Rover round. Oh, there you are. Well, do we look all right then? Oh, the man that gets you will have made a good catch. Do you think so? You look <laughs> lovely. Where's Dougal? Oh, he's away bringing the Land Rover round. <sighs> Give him something to do. He's, he's very nervous. He's all right, is he? Oh, yes, he's fine, he's fine. <coughs> well, come on then, young man. Let's have you properly named. <laughs> Fiona, will you please hurry? We're late enough as it is. Fiona? Yes, coming. Well, you said that half an hour ago. Look, you will give me a hand with the drinks and things after the christening, won't you? <laughs> unpaid secretary, unpaid switchboard operator, and now unpaid hostess and waitress as well. Must be the busiest idler I know. In years gone by, I'd probably have joined the suffragettes. Maybe that's where my future lies. <laughs> Don't you think you're a bit late to be a suffragette? Well, I mean, politics. I could have been a politician. Good grief. Whatever else you lack, it isn't imagination. Now, come on. Alan's in the car waiting for us. A vote for Cunningham is a vote for freedom. No, I don't think so. Neither do I. <sighs> so you give me a pound. It was 52 altogether, so that's 52, 55, 60, 70, 80, 90, and that's the pound. I'm sorry they're getting more expensive, but it's not our fault. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I don't know. She's lucky to get anything. We're only supposed to be open for papers on a Sunday anyway. Oh, is that all? That's, uh, 36 altogether. That's fine. 36. There we go. And four change. I'll get the door for you. Bye-bye. See you soon. That's all I need. What on earth are you messing about with that for, Jimmy? We're late. I'm not messing about with it. The thing's stuck again. Maybe if you oiled it occasionally. Oh, well, it doesn't need oiling. It needs throwing on the rubbish tip. Yeah. Look, why don't you just go on ahead? I'll catch you up. Right. Hope I'm going to be warm enough. Listen, don't forget to lock up now. No, mother. It is the duty of those who present their children for baptism to confess the faith wherein they are to be baptized and to promise to bring them up in that faith 
and in the way of Christ and his church. Do stand. Do you present this child to be baptized, earnestly desiring that he may be grafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church? I do. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? I do. Do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to teach this child the truths and duties of the Christian faith, and by prayer and example, to bring him up in the life and worship of the church? I do. The Lord bless you and your child, and enable you faithfully to keep these promises. Will the congregation stand, please? This sacrament lays solemn obligations upon you, the people of God. Will you be faithful to your calling as members of the Church of Christ, so that this child and all other children in your midst may grow up in the knowledge and love of Christ? Do you accept this responsibility? We do. Donald McEwen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and give you peace. Amen. According to Christ's commandment, Donald McEwen Lachlan is now received into the membership of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and is engaged to confess the faith of Christ crucified and to be his faithful soldier and servant to his life's end. Amen. Well, I suppose you've mapped out the whole of young Donald's future for him, Dougal. Is he to follow in his father's footsteps? Oh, he'll make up his own mind, Mr. Coburn. When he's of an age, I'll not force his path. But you'll want him to stay on the land. Aye, if there's any left for him to stay on. Oh, surely the land will always be here. People have to be fed. Well, I'm not so sure these days. They don't seem to care about planning for the future. They put their pleasures before their bellies. You're begging your pardon, Minister. Oh, dear, you do make it sound bleak, Dougal. Oh, come on, Dougal. We'll be stuck with this lot for the next week unless you eat some of it up. Minister? Okay. Would you believe, Mr. Coburn, that 20 years ago they made the finest cheese in Scotland right here in Glendarroch? Oh, I didn't know that. Neither did I. No, oh, aye, but nowadays it's all yon plastic stuff. Oh. God knows where they get it from. Begging your pardon, Mr. Coburn. <laughs> it is sad to see the church looking so run down. Well, it costs a fortune for upkeep. Did you know they used to make cheese in Glendarroch? Yes, quite a lot of it. Isn't that an industry we could start up again? Uh, no, not really. Why not? Well, it would never pay these days. But it's a cottage industry, isn't it? Yes, but not a successful one. But surely Fiona has a point. Any cottage industry you could re-establish... One it. major problem. What? Glendarroch cheese tasted like soap. Even the mice wouldn't <laughs> touch it. <laughs> no, factory-produced cheddar is better and cheaper. You're a great one for disillusioning folk. I'm a realist, that's all. You'll be telling us next that uh, Japanese whiskey is better than Scotch. Uh, no. Now, that is something Glendarroch used to do well. Oh, there was a distillery here. Oh, there still is. Well, the shell of one, anyway. It's tucked away up at the, the back of Glendarroch. It's kind of a remote spot. Well, they used to take their water from the bun. Made a good malt, though. I would have thought that's something Langerman would have cast his beady eye over. Ah, he prefers American bourbon. <laughs> that's <laughs> not the point. There must be a lot of profit in whiskey. I read somewhere that distillers can never satisfy the world demand. Help yourself to a refill. It's good space side, not Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're right, Mrs. Lachlan. The Reverend Muir, Mr. Hamilton, came after him, didn't he? But you were just a lass yourself then, Mrs. Cunningham. 
At Dougal's christening, I remember, it was a, it was a white floral frock you wore. I thought you'd catch your death of cold at the church. <laughs> Anyone for some plastic factory-produced cheese? Or would you prefer to play it safe and of nuts instead? No, no, thank you, Miss Cunningham. We have food ready up at home. The Advain men will be around soon enough. I really think we should be going, you know. Are you sure you won't have another sherry? Oh, there'll be more than enough drink taken before this day's over, Mrs. Cunningham. Somebody has to keep their head on straight. And I doubt if he'll bother. Oh, well, it isn't every day of the year that a Lachlan is christened. Oh, at our vein, they go mad at the slightest excuse, though. <laughs> it's all right, Alice. I've been in to see Donald, and he's snoring away quite happily. Snoring? Pay no attention, Alice. Fiona has a knack of exaggerating everything. Still, I... He's sleeping as peaceful as a baby. Oh, all the same, I think I'd better go and get him ready. Yes. If you'll excuse me. I'll show you. It was a very nice idea, making Alice the godmother. Yes, she'll take the job very seriously. It was only right, though, she is Amy's sister. It was Dougal that wanted it. are only estimates based on materials and time. Mm -hmm. I've made the usual allowances, hold-ups, bad weather, any problems that might occur. Of course, when you start a project like this, that's when you discover the problems that aren't obvious from the initial inspection. Mm, the hidden virus. Exactly, but I think everything should be quite straightforward. Excellent. I'm most impressed. Are you sure you don't have some German blood in your veins? I am told my grandmother used to spend her holidays in Baden's Baden. Ah, ah. But there's never been any hint of any indiscretion on her part? Of course not. No, I just think it saves time and money to do the job properly. At least that's what I try to do. Obviously. Tell me, in the strictest confidence, of course, what would be the estimated cost of turning this house into a first-class hotel? 20 or 30 rooms, five-star rating. Well? I hardly think that comes in the realms of preservation and restoration. Oh, I don't suppose it does. You feel disinclined to comment? No. So? So. A large extension would have to be built on the back of the house. The rooms would go there. The dining rooms, kitchens, bars, lounges, offices, etc. could all be housed in the main building. At today's prices, such a conversion would cost no less than a million pounds, close to four million West German marks. I think you are wasted at Harrison's. Sometimes I think so, too. Perhaps we could uh, discuss the rest of these figures over lunch. Hold that bracket the way I said. We'll make this job finished before one of us loses a finger. You're worse than my technical teacher was at school. There is always a right way to do things. If it was up to me, I'd have just banged in a couple of nails and be done with it. Well, no wonder half your shelves fall down. You don't put these things up with nails. Okay, okay, Mr. Ken, I'll fix it. You really are a genius. Well, there's always a right way to do things. All right, so I bow to your technical expertise and your high-speed drill. Uh, well, next time I'll hire it out to you. You can do your own maintenance. There's an idea for a business. What? Well, why don't we start hiring out tools? You know, drills, saws, sanders, all that sort of stuff. But around here, not enough people. Besides, why should I encourage them to do it themselves? They might start doing mechanical repairs. Then where would I be? Now, that's true, I suppose. <laughs> Mind you, I did think of getting some more stuff, but I don't see much point in it now. Well, you're not giving up hope, are you? It's just possible the estate board will support the building of a new service station. No. 
No, I haven't given up hope completely, but there's not exactly a stampede to my door. <laughs> Even your Uncle David doesn't come round for a chat like he used to. Hi, Mum. Hello. Oh, thanks very much, Ken. That's just what we were needing there. Well, if it falls down, blame Jimmy. He's not exactly the most orthodox joiner I've ever met. Hey. Oh, I've lived with his handiwork for years. <laughs> Well, look, I'll have to go. Um, just hang on to that drill just now, Jimmy. I'll get it later. Uh, OK, I'll practice, Ken. You should. <laughs> Cheers. Right. Cheers, Ken. Bye-bye. Thanks yeah. again. Right. I'll just take off my coat and give you a hand. You do nothing of the sort. A way through and sit down, I can manage on my own. Oh, would you? I could do with the rest. I think that hill's getting steeper. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, he reminded me a wee bit of you. Oh. Natlin, baby, we don't. Don't go getting all maternal on me. Ah, there's something about christenings, though. And yours was lovely. Oh, Mum, please. What a picture. Everyone was there. We were so proud of you. <sighs> and anyway, for your information, you roared and cried throughout the entire service. And when the minister put the water on your head, you raised the roof. <laughs> well, is it any wonder? What about the proposed changes to Glendarroch House? Do you know anything more about them? Nothing at all. We've still to see Miss Steedman's report. Then I should imagine we'll have a clearer picture of Mr Langerman's intentions. <laughs> if that's true, Mrs Cunningham, it'll be the first time I've had a clear picture of Mr Langerman's plans. <laughs> and what about your plans, Fiona? Are you still thinking of going back to Edinburgh? Uh, no. No? I thought you missed the busy social life. I do and I don't. I have to find myself a job. Something productive? Kay, you don't need a chauffeur's by any chance, do you? Oh, that would be lovely. Unpaid. Oh, no. I have to earn my living. <laughs> Actually, Jimmy and I are thinking of getting involved in a little business venture. Oh, the water sports idea? Yes. I'd be the brains and he could do all the hard work. <laughs> Absolutely. After all, he's only a man. <laughs> you know, Fiona, now that Max Langerman is back, I think it might be a good idea for Jimmy to meet him, discuss his plans. That idea would terrify Jimmy. And it shouldn't. I think Max has always got time for enterprising schemes. But I should warn you, he'll be brutally frank if it doesn't have potential. I've already spoken to Jimmy. He hadn't quite thought it through properly. But it does have possibilities. Good. It doesn't have finances, however. Yeah. That's where the estate comes in. Well, that all depends on how much capital the board is prepared to invest in Glendara. Well, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but... There are other priorities. Like a mobile clinic? Not even that, Kay. Kay, if the chairman is going to persuade the board to invest heavily on the one hand, they'll want a substantial increase in income on the other. A mobile clinic is philanthropic, not profitable. Why does everything have to have a profit motive? That is good business, in some people's opinion. Well, would someone like to explain to me where the profit motive is in spending thousands of pounds in this house? That, Fiona, is something we'd all like to know. <laughs> well, that's a good one there. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> no, now, where you go now? You never know when to stop, any of you. Yeah, well. Bye, Ronnie. Bye. Bye, then. Bye. Bye, -bye. Uh, bye Jamie. Uh, go carefully now. Remember yon bad bye. bend by the old distillery. And don't bother to stop there either. That place has been dry for 20 years and more. Yeah, now, Mother, don't you know that it's Ronnie and Jamie that drank it dry? My regards <laughs> to your mother, Jamie. On bye you now. Bye bye. Helpless. They'll kill themselves on that track. Oh, never. They just have to put the Land Rover into gear and it'll find its own way back to their croft. Oh, and anyway, it's Alec that's driving and he hasn't touched a drop. He's teetotal, poor soul. Oh, well, at least one of them has some sense. What a mess. Do you know, if Cameron had given us one more version of coming through the rye, I'd, I'd have crowned him. <laughs> oh, he has a fine tenor voice, has Cameron. Sounds like a foghorn. Now, look, don't you trouble yourself with this. I can manage. Oh, it won't take us a minute. Oh, well, it was nice of them all to come. We could have done with half of them. Oh, they fairly shifted some whiskey. Oh, they always do. <laughs> We're not bored, then, Lars. Oh, no, I liked it. Even the singing. <laughs> <laughs> then you must have been very bored before you came here. Yes, I think I was. Oh, just you wait until the summer comes. Oh, it's grand round our vein at the summer. Oh, summer's still a long way away. Yes, it'll be here before you know it. Are you going out, the Dougal? 
Oh, no. I'm just going to sit here by the fire for a wee while and relax. I'll make some tea, shall I? Oh, I would enjoy that. Be wasted on him, though. I'd better go and see to the baby. Right. Hey, ho. That's one of the perks of living here on the estate. I can always get good logs to burn. Are you enjoying your book? It's so peaceful. I've got through quite a few books the past weeks. Oh, I, I was never a great reader myself. I don't have the concentration. Mind you, I don't have the time either. Look, okay, it's peaceful right enough. That's what Amy always used to say. And she never got bored. At least, that's what she always said. No, she was never bored, Dougal. Whenever she wrote to me, she was always full of what was going on in our Aye. Aye. Aye, it's fine and peaceful. And safe. And it's good having two women about the place again. Phone the police, Mother. We've had a visitor. 